ICT, 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 ICT. Bro, stop dick riding, bro. That's all you literally talk about. Watch this shit no more, bro. If you've watched hours of ICT content and still don't understand the strategies, in this video, I'm going to simplify how to trade the fair value gaps to get the best entries and exits for your trades. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the fair value gap strategy. This is a really effective strategy, in my opinion, because it'll help you enter into stocks much more efficiently and have those sniper entries. I think this strategy can be combined with the strategy you're using right now because this strategy occurs on different stocks. Now, most of the videos that I've seen on YouTube on the fair value gap strategy, they talk about the ES Minion futures and Forex. But I want to show you guys that if you're even trading options or just regular stocks, you can still use the fair value gap strategy and it's really effective for you to trade with. So to understand how a fair value gap is created, we need to understand how candles form. Essentially, the fair value gap is a range in between candles. However, when candles are forming, we need to understand what actually happens. So we understand that there is a bullish and bearish candle. A bullish candle basically means that you're looking to go long on a stock and the stock is going to keep continuing to the upside. When we have a bullish candle, we see that the open of the bullish candle is near the low of the candle and we see the close of the candle coming in near the high. This shows that buyers stepped in near the open and they brought the price up and sellers could not bring it back down. Therefore, this candle creates a bullish candle. Now, vice versa, on the bearish candle, we see that we actually open up near the highs. Therefore, when the buyers came in, right, we actually opened up on the highs. But on this candle, sellers became in charge and we understand that near the high when we opened up, buyers brought it all the way down to the low, but we created that close near that low, right? Therefore, we understand that this candle has more selling pressure. Now, when we understand how candlesticks form, we can understand why the fair value gap occurs. The fair value gap occurs when there's a gap in the market or a price imbalance. This means that buyers are either more present than sellers or sellers are more present than buyers. What the fair value gap is, is like I said, a range or it's a gap in which buyers and sellers have price imbalance. So to create a fair value gap, we need three candlesticks. We need candlestick A, B, and C. For a bullish fair value gap, we see that on the first candlestick, we have the first candlestick's wick where it closed on the high, and we see candlestick C's wick on the low. In between this, we see a big impulsive move. This impulsive move created a gap in between candlestick A and C, and this left imbalance in between both of these candles as there's more buyers present here that made the stock move up and there wasn't enough sellers to hold it down. What this shows is when the stock theoretically comes back into this zone, we should see the buyers still active near that area and present. Therefore, when we do get a pullback back into that fair value gap, we should see buyers taking control and moving the stock even higher. Now, vice versa, on the bearish fair value gap, we see candlestick A, B, and C. Candlestick A's low is where we start drawing that price imbalance, and candlestick C's high is where we close that price imbalance. In between this, we see a gap where sellers had an impulsive move down, and we see that gap being created. Therefore, when we do come back into this zone, we should see that sellers have more control and there's a liquidity void in between these candles. Now, there's three rules of fair value gaps that I personally think you should use. Number one is waiting for the trend to confirm. If fair value gaps were as easy as everyone makes them seem, everyone would be a millionaire trader, but they're not because you need to understand other factors in the market to help you identify fair value gaps. Waiting for the trend to confirm this means either to the long side or to the short side, you need to understand which way the trend is. Therefore, when you come back into that fair value gap, you know which way to buy or sell the stock. And this helps you get those sniper entries, but you really need to wait for that trend to confirm. This is the main reason people aren't profitable using fair value gaps. Number two, price action in the direction of the move. When the trade does come back into that fair value gap, don't just blindly buy into the trade. Wait for price action to confirm the move, right? This means lower wicks, upper wicks, big range candles, right? Things like that. You need to understand price action. If you haven't watched my price action video, make sure to go do that to understand how candlesticks affect the chart. And finally, understanding market context. This means when you are trading those fair value gaps, it's super important that you only identify fair value gaps when they have made a break of market structure in between the trend and it has an impulsive move to either the upside or downside. Therefore, that gap actually has a significant presence on the chart and isn't just 
a small random gap that you've decided on the one minute chart, right? You need to make sure that other people can also see that gap. So when the price does come near that level, the chart moves in the favor of your direction. So now that we understand what the fair value gap is and why it occurs, let's go look at some real examples. All right, here we are on an example on Tesla. So we can see that we have an impulse move to the upside and we broke high of day, which breaks market structure to the upside as well. This shows that we are actually going long for the day as the stock has relative strength and an impulse move to the upside. Where do we see the fair value gap being created on this chart like we explained in the example before? Well, the fair value gap would be created where we see a gap in the market. Now, when we see our gap in the market, we see an impulse candle here, right? And then we see a wick to wick right here. This is the gap that was created within this market right? Because we see that there was a lot of buyers here that created the stock to move above high of day and break that market structure to the upside with a very big impulsive move. So when we're looking to create an entry on this stock, we want the stock to come back down into this fair value gap and then create a new high of day. This is something that I've back tested and I think works the best when you have your profit targets a high of day and low of day or key psychological numbers and then have your stop loss a little bit below a break of market structure or the previous candle that you're trying to enter on. So in this example here, we would have our profit targets at 180.30s and we can put our stop loss below this previous candle at 178.66. If you also wanted, you could have put your stop loss at this 933 candle as well. But in this example here, this was a really impulsive move and a nice retrace of this zone would be in this fair value gap. This gives us enough room with the stop loss because we also have high of day near this level. So let's play out this trade here. And as we can see right here, there's a lot of strong lower wicks being made on the chart. If you haven't watched my video on how to read price action in candlesticks, make sure to go watch that video as well. But it's really important that we understand that there is buyers stepping back in near these levels because we see those lower wicks being created and the candles closing as a hammer stick candle. Therefore, we can enter this trade here with the fair value gap looking for that high of day move and our stop loss is a little bit below that previous wick that we made on this candle. This gives us a 2.8 risk to reward trade. This means if we risk $100 on this trade, we should make $280. So let's play this trade out and see how this trade worked out. Notice how on this candle, once again, we had an impulse move to the upside. We didn't come to our high of day target just yet. However, when we pulled back, look at how strong of a wick we put in on this hammer candle as well into that fair value gap, showing that there's a lot of strong buyers. And therefore, when we do come up to high a day, you can actually take partials on high a day looking for even higher profit targets, for example, 181 in this example on Tesla. And just like that, we created a new high a day on Tesla and we made $280 on this trade. If we took this trade with a $100 risk, showing that this fair value gap is a really good strategy to use. Now, there's a couple things I want to mention when we do see this trade. The first thing I want to mention is we do see the break of structure. The break of structure occurred when we broke this previous high candle. Right? This high candle that was put in at 930, we broke that to the upside. Therefore, we broke market structure and we understood that the bias was to the upside. When we pulled back, we saw that price action allowed the stock to move to the upside because we saw buyers stepping in with those lower wicks. And finally, we understood that within this context of the fair value gap and market structure, we can take a long position targeting high a day and our stop loss below market structure, right? So there's a couple moving factors that you need to understand when you're trading these fair value gaps. You can't just blindly trade fair value gaps because it won't work. You need to understand market context, market structure, the bias slash trend of the day, and then finally price action as well, right? So this was a great example of how to use the fair value gap. Let's go look for one more example. Here we are on another example of fair value gaps. In this example, what we see is there's no break of market structure until we break out of this consolidation period on SPY. And this consolidation period consists of the low that was made at 41221s and then the high that was made here at 41273. Therefore, we need to break out of this consolidation period for a break of market structure and to help us identify which way the trend of the day is. Now, if we play out this chart, we see that between these levels, we really don't want to take any trades because it's completely choppy. We want to break market structure. 
What we see here is this candle right here actually broke market structure to the upside. However, it never closed above the previous day high. However, the following candle after that did close above that previous day high, therefore showing us that the trend is to the upside. Now, when we're looking at fair value gaps, can you guys spot the fair value gap in between that consolidation period? Well, the fair value gap was created when we had an impulse move from this candle to the lower wick of the candle that broke that market structure to the upside and we can just pull that all the way through and that's our fair value gap therefore when the stock does have this break of structure we want it to pull back come into the zone and then we can target higher levels now in this example here we see the high a day is already fairly close therefore for our profit targets we can also use previous day levels in this example here, when we look at the previous day on SPY, first level that really comes to me and sticks out on SPY is this consolidation that SPY had at 413.28. So we can use this as a profit target for this specific trade. Now, when we're looking at this trade, what we want to happen is SPY come back down into our level here, have a move to the upside, maybe even consolidate a little bit, and then have a nice move and break into our level at 413.28. In this example here, if we were to take this trade, our stop loss would be a break of that structure from that impulse move. We can see that we held that 412.36 level really well, and that was that low that we created to make this impulse move. Therefore, we can create that as our stop loss on this trade with our profit target at 413.28. Now, let's see how price action occurs within the fair value gap to see if we can take a trade. And what we can see here is a very strong candle close with a hammer candle actually in that fair value gap at that 10 12 candle therefore we can enter into the trade here looking for that 4 13 28 move with their stop loss below the fair value gap at that structure break this trade once again if we risk 100 dollars, we would make 210 dollars on this trade now let's play out this trade and see exactly what happened we see a new high of day being put in the stock is holding above our fair value gap and our stop loss therefore it is completely fine we even come back into this fair value gap now when we come back into the fair value gap what you need to be looking for is price action so in this example here we do see once again when we come back into that fair value gap lower wicks this shows that the fair value gap is still strong and therefore you could enter into more of a position here if you wanted Therefore, if you were risking $100 on this trade, you could increase your risk to $200 on this trade and have your reward at $400. However, it's very important that you understand what your risk management is. If you added a starter position, this was possible. However, if you added a full position here rather than a starter, and if you didn't, then I'd just say to let the trade work out and see what happens within the trade, right? There's no reason to be panicking if the trade does come back into that fair value gap. Like we see here, another new high a day on SPY. And just like that, right, we just got that, we just got that profit target hit on SPY at 413.26. Therefore, if you did have that risk of $100, you just made $210 on that trade. So in this example, again, what do we see? We see that break of market structure. We see the pullback. We see price action. We see the context that we're trading within. And we also see the trend on this trade. Two really good examples of rating the fair value gap now let's go to the final example all right and here we are on our final example in this example here we're using apple and we can see that there is a low being made on apple at 164.59 and a high being created at 165.39s this shows that in between both of these levels we have no clear direction on apple and therefore we want one of these levels to break to show the bias and trend of the day so let's play this chart out and see exactly what happens here we can see a very strong move to the downside on Apple. We see a break of structure of 164.89s and we see that Apple had a nice move down showing that the trend is indeed to the downside. Therefore, where would we be looking to enter for a fair value gap? Would it be on these green candles? It wouldn't, right? Because we don't see any gaps being created within these green candles. As we can see, the wicks of all these candles actually fill in any gap in between these candles right the only fair value gap that we see on this chart here is on this red candle right this big impulsive move down to the wick of this candle right to the wick of that 940 
3 candle and the bottom wick of the 941 candle. We see that gap being created on Apple. Okay, so what we're looking for is a retest into that zone on Apple. So what we want is maybe a move, maybe more to the downside. And then we're looking for that retest on Apple and then a nice move once again to the downside like so. Okay, so that's essentially what we're looking for. This would be the best case scenario for the fair value gap in this example. Now, what would we be looking for when we're looking at profit targets and stop loss? This comes after the chart has developed, of course, but from just looking at the chart here, we can see that we have a clear stop zone and a pivot level on Apple, right? This is the previous high that we made as well at 165.22. That's near where the chart opened up on the day. And we see this pivot level also holding here at 165.22s. And so that would be a stop loss on this trade. So let's keep playing this trade out and see exactly what happened. So we can also see this pivot level forming on Apple right here. This could also be used as a profit target on Apple, right? Because this is where the pivot low is slash low of day is on Apple, right? So let's keep playing this trade out. And as we can see here, we entered into that fair value gap. We got a pretty nice shooting star candle on Apple as well, showing that price action shows that there's sellers in that zone. Therefore, we can take a trade into that zone. We can look to short Apple into that zone. We're looking for profit targets at low of day and our stop loss is a little above that pivot level. This gives us a risk to reward ratio of 2.39, meaning for every $100 that we risk, we would make $239 or rounding up to $240 on this trade. Now let's play out this trade and see exactly what happens. So far, we respect that fair value zone. We're coming down to our profit targets. We actually didn't hit our profit targets here uh surprisingly right we actually held above that profit target which is fine um even though you know most people would take their trade out within near that level i always want to hit my profit target or stop loss um that's something that i always do right so even if i'm a little bit off my profit target i'll still hold my trade just because i have higher conviction within these zones and as we can see here we have our profit target hit right there at 162.28 showing that this was a great trade and like like i said if we risked 100 dollars, we would have made 239 dollars on this specific trade so i hope this video helped improve your fair value gaps and show you how to create fair value gaps in order to get sniper entries while day trading we can combine the fair value gap strategy with your own strategy like i've done myself and you can increase your probability to win trades even higher I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you guys next week with a brand new video.